Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to be continuing the exploration we started with the previous video, uh, M58, of interactive uh, TSO terminal programming. Um, what we want to do this today is uh, write a utility in the Unix tradition. We call it Who Am I, uh, such as the one we have on uh, on Linux or, or any Unix, who am I? And then returns to us the name of the user that we are logged in as right now. So I want to have this same command on TSO and, um, re and, and so that we can write who am I in the TSO command line and it will tell us who are we logged in as, which can sometimes be very useful. And in writing this utility, we're going to be exploring the um, way to write to the terminal, uh, terminal programming, as well as also we'll put in a, a slightly uh, variation, a slight variation to who am I. So we first also read some input from the user so we can explore not only putting stuff on the screen, but also getting input back from the user. Um, that's one thing. The second thing is we'll also, instead of using uh, ZOS as I've had, uh, as I've used for the previous two videos, we're going to be using MBS 3.8 as delivered with TK4 because that's what most people run at home. Uh, I don't think a whole lot of people outside the professionals who already work in a mainframe shop would have access to, uh, to a ZOS image. And so we're gonna go back to MBS for this particular video. So let's get going. So I uploaded the previous program from, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, M58, uh, the one where we write to the TSO uh, screen. And first of all, we'll make sure that this uh, indeed does run correctly on MBS. There's no reason why it shouldn't. And then we'll start changing it from here and start adding the logic to report the user. Uh, if you remember, with this program that I have here on the screen, reports IPL parameters, which is useful to have, but that's not what we want to do in this particular video. So we will start, of course, off the CVT table, the common vector table, which is the mother of all tables in MVS. And from there, we can go and explore other, all other nucleus tables so that we can get the information about the currently logged in user. So, um, and, and again, if you need to um, have better understanding, I suggest you, you watch the two previous videos, M57 and M58, about uh, obtaining information from the nucleus and writing interactive TSO utilities. So uh, I uploaded this here and I have two screens. One is with the, I have here the console of my uh, TSO, of my MBS uh, system. Uh, for that I use, um, I am, I'm on. We go here to to O, oops, oops, OS console monitor. So O, and then you type T, and you get the the console. So we just have, we just keep the console here for to see what's going on with the system. There's nobody else other than me logged in. And by the way, one of my little side projects is I think I'm going to start a Google virtual machine on the Google Cloud and put up uh, a uh, my TK4, MBS TK4 with some of my modifications and anybody who wants to have a, a login onto that system and sends me an email explaining why, what they plan to do with it, I'll create them a login so they don't have to run their own TSO at home or on the laptop. They, it's going to be in the cloud and always up and running and they just need the terminal program to access uh, MBS and don't have to bother with running with running uh, uh, their own MBS uh, at home and maintaining it. So if you have any interest in that, please also drop me a comment below this video. So let's get going. So I have this here up and running and I know that I need to change the JCL obviously a little bit from the ZOS version because we're not going to be using the high level assembler in this case, we're going to be using the um, XF assembler that comes delivered with MBS 3.8. Um, so let's start using this. Compile a link step. Um, caps on. And we're going to be calling this linkage editor and ASM says in. Okay, 
So let's see if we can get first this one to compile properly. We need to provide sys1 amol gen because this is where the macros are, uh, such as this ones, to access the, the tables. And so um, let's first get this to compile and then we'll see how to change it. Oh, JCL error. That's strange. Job not run. Overridden step not found in procedure number 22. ESM sys in. Okay, let's see what's wrong with this. Why is this? Not working. Start. Let's look at the example. I have an example right here. So it says here ASM Sizen. Why would this not work? ASM Sizen. Let's go find out what the procedure is. Okay, we purge those members, this spool output, and let's go prop lib. Let's see if we can find the procedure for this. Here it is. So we have the ASM. So that is the name of the of the step for the IFOX, um, which is the FX assembler. And then we have the linkage editor step, LCAD, and ASM. So this should work. This should absolutely work. Um, don't know why it wouldn't. ASM dot this looks absolutely correct. Exactly what we had there. And still, it's not working. Submit. JCL error. User. So, I'll have to expose this a little bit. I'll be right back. Okay, folks, I'm back. So, this was so such a vexing problem that uh, I looked it up everywhere I couldn't find it and finally I contacted Jurgen Winkelmann the TK4 maintainer himself um, and asked what I was doing wrong and then he offered me the simplest reason which I actually knew but I completely forgot about uh, and that is uh, something that uh, I've heard uh, about half a year, a year ago, and I, I told myself that I sh will entertain, that I will, I will, I will make everything possible to remember that rule because you know there's no point in writing it down. But then promptly I, I completely forgot it, and that is that in MVS 3.8, whenever you invoke procedures such as this assembler compiler link procedure, when you then provide the data definitions um, for the replacement in that procedure, they have to be put in in the order in which they appear in the procedure. And of course, if you see that, I mean, Jürgen spot that, spotted that in, in half a second, but I have here the linkage editor sizzle mod, which is the data definition um, uh, that, that tells the procedure where to store the load module, the binary, is before the assembler um, 
source code and, and that of course in MVS doesn't work. We had it like this in the previous videos in MVS in M57 and 58 because we were on ZOS and there it doesn't matter but in MVS you have to put them in the same order so the solution obviously is to take this one and move it down to after the, after the, uh, the source code for the assembler. So uh, now that we fixed this, let's uh, let's see what we what we're dealing here with and um, and uh, start to work on this program a little bit. So I'll submit it, and it ended with condition code 18, which is one of the highest I ever had in the last two years. I had condition code 20 a couple of weeks ago when I did M57 or M58, I think. So let's go check. Okay, here it is, and. Just condition codes okay so the first one is easy yes we don't have ammo 24 uh, obviously it wouldn't make any sense to put 31 because mbs 3.8 is only 24 bit so we can remove these two lines and those will fix it then obviously these are problems yeah i know what this is the um cv the cv the extended cvt table is something that's not present in in mbs 3.8 and that's why it's um, to compile the the macro library has a problem with this um, also this are all things related to uh, versions later than mvs 3.8 i would guess they're either mvs esa or os 390 uh, parameters such as lpar the lpars didn't even exist in mvs 3.8 days and also the uh, sysplex didn't exist so all these are understandable let's see what else we have and of course, this macro doesn't exist because there is no extended CVT uh, table in, and also there's no IPA table in FPS. So we got it to work. Um, uh, we got it to work to the, in, to the extent that the, we have a way to build um, our program now. So let's start working on making this um, uh, the program we, that we want it to be, which is uh, who, who am I? Right, the Unix style who am I for TSO. I will switch now uh, back again to uh, programming and then playing it back uh, in a little while in accelerated mode so we can cut the time of this video because already we're, we're already quite, uh, we've used already quite a number of minutes. So um, see you very soon and uh, have fun following me as I program this almost from scratch.
Okay, I think, uh, welcome back. Uh, I think changed enough so we can give it a try. This is the console here on the right side or the left side. Let's see how much damage I've done here. Please bear me with me. I never done this before. Uh, all these things I just do on the go as I make the video. I don't try these things out before. So I've never, I never really know what's gonna happen. And if it works, then I guess I learn something. Hopefully you also learn something. If it doesn't, then I just make a fool out of myself but I don't really care. Okay. Oh, condition code eight. That isn't so bad. Okay. Let's go check it out. This was job 28. Yep. Alrighty. Um, this is the assembler. Why is this wrong? Oh, yeah. Something's missing here. Okay, that's the error. Let's go check it out. Yeah, that wouldn't work. But I think <laughs> if I'm a little lucky, always the lucky bastard that I am, condition code zero. <laughs> Yay. All right, so let's go figure it out. Um, this looks like it ran. 
and we have um, okay so one thing I didn't say before is that I put in here authorization code one why I want this to be APF authorized so that um, it is allowed to do kind of like root privileges and the way to do it is I put it in here uh, I guess the the sharp eyed um, among you already noticed that but um, I put in the linkage editor parameters here to make it uh, access code one and everything else looked like it uh, worked let's see uh, if we can get a little bit more information out of this but uh, before we go there let's go see what happened with the lo load module um, the load module is 1a6 bytes long um, we can do this here uh, 1a6 bytes in decimal let's see if Google is smart enough nope hex to decimal 1a6 convert 422 bytes okay so let's go check out the load module um, start we got four her up to zero one and we put it here in here and yes it was linkage linked on today oh actually today is the 6th of april i always thought it was the 4th of april but it's all here um now um, let's go execute this so this is what we have to run from the command line hopefully this all works save it we're not quite done yet i also wanted to play with inputting data from the terminal this is just the first part call and let's see hmm that didn't go so well <laughs> user x um okay um let's go bug fixing so apples and at the same time we have to go there and delete the load module otherwise we'll just keep testing the same uh, delete yeah okay so what's wrong here um, so we go to the cvt 16 bytes of the cvt then we swing over to the ASCB, then to, from there to the TCB, from the TCB to the PSCB. That seems to have worked. Um, let's see, let's just try, um, put it in title line two, just to see if this is the, is the problem. Um, if we get this data out, that's what I want to know. Um, to put, oh, um, and length of, okay, just as a as a test to see if we can get this out. Um, in the tipput macro, you need to tell it how long is the line you put it on the screen. And, I, and I, I know now from starting with the IBM material that for tget, which is the input uh, macro, it's gonna be the same thing. So let's run this. And, oh, condition code 18. That's not good. Back again to trouble. Let's go find out. This was chuck 30. What was wrong? I didn't like something. This is because we put an X ref cross reference long instead of short. In short, it, I think it only puts in the stuff that you actually use in your program.
Uh, no statements back in this assembly. High severity was 16, but why? Executed. This is strange. Let's see what happens with the load module. Is it there? No. Because it says it didn't execute it. Um, let's go change it to short again. It didn't like XRF long, but uh, now it seems to have worked. Let's check. Yes, it's there. So oh. what was it again? Uh, Herp zero one test load lib. Who am I? Ooh, totally messed up. Even worse. Mm -hmm. So, what's the matter here? Okay, so we're doing this. Um, let me look at this for a second. I had on GitHub IPO util Let's see briefly how we did this So we have outline, let's move this here, um, move after, so it's term line plus, um, just using the same syntax here, which worked just fine. I start to think we're not getting our payload here. This is not working, I think. Um, So this is let's just have let's just do it like this. Let's remove this and close it here. Then we know it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. At position twenty, that's where we need to. So let's just do it like that. And position twenty. Um, okay, where is it here? We'll do it at term line plus 20 and all the TSO user IDs before ZOS 2.2, .2, but very recently could only be seven characters long. So we say term line plus 20 bytes down term line. 20 characters uh, with a length of 7 and then we put in the PSC CB user okay and save it 
we have to go delete uh, the old load module so we don't test old stuff. Delete. Okay. Compress. Okay. Um, let's go back and run this again. Maximum condition code zero. Yes, it's here. So. Yeah, that's the problem. It's not getting, it's not getting it, okay. So, something is very wrong here. Why are we not getting? Two dot two, it's still seven, but they added some fields because now, as of two dot two, it could be longer. Okay, so this seems correct. Let's copy and put it in here. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that we're not chaining here correctly. Um, so let's uh, do this compilation with the macro expansion 33 and first of all let's go delete this so we don't forget and then uh, 3.8 33 okay let's see what it did with our code uh, right 10 uh, 5 okay so let's see how we hang we swing over from tree to tree like tarzan here um, this worked so um, so we have here using okay up to here we have we're using what 12 which is C okay C is our base register here we use 3 as our base register because that's what we say to do and then CVT overload point to the TCB and ASCB which is 0 uh, off of the CVT Then we point to the TCB here, which is four bytes off um, the ACB, which I checked before, so that seems correct. Then we drop register three, then we use the TCB register three. Then we point to the job CB, TCB. JSCB, which I copied from the IBM reference website, that should be correct. And then we drop that. Oh, ah, yeah, I know what the error is. Sorry, folks. Ah, this is taking way too long. Um, I should. I should have realized before. This is stupid of me. So after the TCB, the JSCB, we still need to move. Um, 
we need we need to base off something else, um, which is called uh, yeah insert using um, I looked it up before I Z what was it again I E Z uh, what was it again I Z the J S C B the job. Um, yeah, I E Z. Let's look it up. Pretty sure. I Z J S C B. Yeah, let's copy this. Um, some people use this stuff all the time, like IBM operating system developers, and then they know it by heart. But I have to look this stuff up all the time. It's not that easy to remember. So, and then R3, we base, okay. Point to PSCB, of course. 100 off. So that's gonna be hexadecimal 108 off. Um, and then we drop course drop register three again and then we use the PSCB um, and I think if we do it this way this should work um, so I wasn't swinging like Tarzan properly I I didn't catch one of those how do you call those ropes that hang from the trees in Tarzan movies I, I missed one and fell on the ground uh, there was nothing to copy I was just copying here PSCB user, but we were not there yet. He didn't swing properly to the proper table. Um, so that, of course, wouldn't work. Okay, condition code zero. And now we can straight, can go straight to the call the zero one test load lib. Where am I? Still doesn't work. once and for all okay so there must be some other errors which we didn't find out I'll, I'll instead of boring you here with the with the debugging I'll do some deep soul searching and find this bug and I'll get back to when I found it thank you okay I'm back I didn't have much time to look into this because I had to go to work but on the way to the office as I was thinking I got an idea and I'm just logging in right now. I'm pretty sure I know what uh, was going wrong and that is I never actually loaded. Let me see here. So first we go to the CVT, then we go to the address place control block. And then we head off, swing over to the TCB. From there we grab a rope and we go to the JCSCB and then we go over here and i think that's where the, yeah exactly yeah that's what i was thinking so um what we need is to load obviously the address so uh, yeah i forgot yeah okay so i think we oh what did i just do Okay. Um, where was I? Yeah, as I was swinging over from here to here, load R3, and then we need to uh, J S C B S C B, right? Uh, that's what we need. The PSCB off of JSCB. Um, there's one. Be too many here. Yeah, that looks about right. JSCB, and then we need there we need uh, the BC BSCB. So once we load there that, then <clears throat> from there we can go then off. I think this is what we need to do. Um, let's delete the previous load module. 
Uh, yep, still here. Okay, so let's submit this. Max condition code zero. Uh, let's see if the little module is here. And um, yeah, it's here. So now we go to the command line and load. We're gonna. I'm gonna be putting this in a way in a, in a library which doesn't require to write this whole sentence. Load. You can just write the command command name. But for now, uh, I didn't want to test it. I didn't want to do it until I know it works. Load lib. Who am I? Warning: No entry point received. That's really weird. Um, yeah, so apples. 3.8, let's go look at the output. Uh, let's put in here the the console so we know that was job, job 35. So where is all this way swinging here? Okay, this seems to have gone well. Yeah, it recognizes this. And why did I get this error? Let's find JSC. B P P S C P. Hmm. And J S C B P C B. So it's load register and then using which we did, which we did a little different, but that's okay. Where well, register register then zero gives addressability for all symbols. In addition to the mandatory use of this macro for reference to the JSCB modules in which allocate and uh, Okay, that seems correct. I mean, I think I did it correctly. Well, I need to go and read some. I have a book about this, um, and I'm going to have to read the book a little bit. I'll be right back. Okay, um, I did look at the source code again, and I think I found it. Um, I did something stupid here. Uh, that's what happens when you change name of data fields too often. Um, I was putting here, um, if you look, uh, this title line 2, L title line 2, um, if you look at just a few seconds ago. And obviously that is long, wrong because we use termlin here. And so the T put needs to be on termlin, comma, and then L apostrophe, which means length of termlin. Um, okay, T put on the screen term line and the length of term line. That is the proper way to do it. And okay, let's do it. Uh, condition code zero. That should now hopefully work, unless there's some huge surprises. Uh, yeah. So uh, load of zero test load lib. Who am I? Um, yeah, TSO, your user, Herc01. So we got this done. Um, warning, no entry point received. Um, that's, I don't know what is that. Let's look it up.
No entry point, no entry point, but I think I'm filled with end card. Oh, that's... Probably user error, you specify the entry point name in the load parameter list. Entry points in the parameter field of uh, or end card. The end card entry points must be incorrect. This incorrect ID bad column alignment. It's also incorrect. Probably user error. Specify the entry name in the loader parameter list. EP if the entry point. But it, okay. So let's try again. Okay, not quite sure what that is, but it does work. We get the user ID uh, output now. So let's keep working on this a little bit more. Um, what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna type this whole long um, thing on the command line to call it. So we're gonna change it so that it saves it in a place uh, where we can invoke it directly just by the command line. And, by the, by the command name and so to do that if you see here it says to there is this is all the additional libraries defined by the tk4 maintainer Jurgen and the has your library we know it's a load module library because it's undefined and every all the commands that go in here such as TSO apples itself um, if we look here somewhere we have TSO Yeah, all these commands here, they can be invoked directly because they're linked in the concatenation for the logon procedure for TSO. So we're going to put it in here. And to do that, uh, we just have to change to sys2 command lib. Who am I? Okay, this will add it in there. And we have everything in order here. I believe. Um, so this should automatically work. Uh, let's run it. Condition code zero. Let's go test. And now, yeah, works perfectly. So now I just have to type who am I, like, as if it was in a Unix shell prompt and then I get this response TSO your user herc01 okay so that worked so what we've done so far is just uh, produce a small utility for MBS now we're gonna go and uh, do a little bit of input reading so um, let's change let's go in into our program and <clears throat> let's edit this um, let's put in here message one message prompt PC CL40 more request rerun or input okay so now after we put this on the screen okay so we're going to put in here copy after i'm going to put in prompt length of prompt Oh, there's somebody at the door. Let me just go there. Okay, the piano tuner was here, so that took me. Couldn't record video for a while, so let's get back to this. And so I, I was just putting in the prompt. If and so the prompt is going to be um, a very simple case that we're going to build here is that we're going to print the output and of the username and then it's going to ask if we want to rerun and reprint the output it doesn't make a whole lot of sense but we want to keep it simple just to show how the 
the, the, the two-way interaction works on TSO. And then I'm sure the creativity of uh, the folks on this channel is going to be endlessly producing interesting results once you start using this for your own programming. Okay, so I got this uh, so far and uh, let's see what else we want to do. Uh, we got the reply. So we got the prompt. I want to do a reply now. Reply DC. DC means data constant. And we do a seal character length one. And I put in an N. So by default, it will be no. Uh, reply of fault no. And then. Uh, so that it's, it makes the code a little bit more readable when I compare the input um, to determine if it's a yes or no. I'll say no, DC, zero one one no, and yes, DC, zero one one yes. Okay. Um, then we won't be needing, well, actually we do need this. Um, and then um, let's change the date to something that makes sense. Okay. the equal sign here because I already counted it down for the in this place so I mean I can use TSO user ID uh, well let's do it right and so this is one two three four five six so it, should, it will be 14 okay so we fix it now okay so we got this done And um, so now the next thing we want to do is the T get. So first we put, uh, let's remove the um, prepare. Yeah, let's remove this. Uh, we don't need the empty lines. Um, and then access IPA stays and then prepare report um, okay so here we do a redo give this a label of redo so that if the user wants it done again it will come back again to this to this line and and um, here we put in the question the prompt and and then we do here, we insert. Now here we do the ticket, which is a macro which says that we put it into a buffer called reply uh, with one length one. So only one character is going to be read in the terminal. Ask if to rerun. Okay. Then the proper way to do it would be to check for a return code. Um, something like this um, any error on TSO and then BZ we will do something like BZ error um, and then we can do that um, and say here we could do this W general TSO terminal error. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just putting it here so you see what I would like to do. 
but um, I don't know why TSO will produce an error. I mean, it kind of works. Uh, it's been it's been working for 40 years, all right. So um, I'm going to remove this by commenting it out, and uh, instead, let's compare the output. Um, there it was CLI we say reply the content of, of whatever the user put in on the term is now inside this buffer called reply and we say reply um, and we compare it to a yes okay user said repeat and and in case the user says yes, um, branch not equal, if it's not equal to yes, which, which means it said no, then we say branch to redo. Um, okay, redo it, otherwise. Otherwise, we'll proceed with this part here. Okay. Um, so we get off here. Actually, we can leave it in. Yeah. Um, should work. Um, well, my motions. So I think this is pretty much it. Um, I can't imagine the prompt is here. Rerun, yes or no. Okay, so now we're going to go and put this in here. Who am I? So that we can execute it directly by just typing this command. So let's see what comes out. Condition code zero. Oh, that went well. Okay, so TSO user ID herc zero one. That went perfectly. Uh, there's an error here. Who am I? Oh, it should be the other way around. <laughs> um, yeah. No, yes. Okay, we have an error here. Logical error, sorry. Um, 3.4, let's delete. Bottom, let's delete the load module so we don't keep using the same one again. We could have a step in the JCL to delete that module before we create a new one, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little lazy right now, so... Um, Okay, so here we say branch uh, go to return, otherwise branch redo, okay, this will fix it. Okay, so I see no reason why this shouldn't work. Access nucleus here. Okay, this looks good. Let's run it. Return code zero. Where am I? Yeah, no. And that's it. So this works perfectly. Um, so now that we've done this, I would like um, to show you a utility that actually, this looks like very basic, but we can actually use whole full screen um, TSO panels. And to show you that, I would like to do something else. There is a utility on the CBT tape. And by the way, you should know how to access the CBT tape. So, MBS, ETHZ. 
PK4, if you go there, you can download the CBT tapes, uh, which is a bunch a, a zip file and you unzip it into your MVS 3.8 directory and it will ask you to override, you say yes, all. And then you, re of course, you need to shut down MBS before that. And then you IPL MBS again. And if you do that, um, you go here, you can go to CBT002. So these are volumes that you download from this, from this uh, zip file. And once you re IPL, there's going to be, these are all utilities. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of utilities. And there is one very good one here. Uh, CBT, on CBT volume CBT002, as you can see here, file 264, there's a utility called Look. And this uses TGET and TPU to control full session, full screen sessions. And what I want to do is I want to copy this over and compile it so I can show you how this works. So why don't we do that? Uh, so the file to copy is this. Three uh, dot three copy this file from volume CBT002 to uh, look, call it just like that, look. Uh, Okay, so we copied this file, and now let's go look at it. Before we do that, let's get all the JCL that we need around it. So we'll need this. Right. Uh, E40, I40. Okay, so now we have this, and put in here an L for look. And then we just need the sizzle mod line. Um, let's go to the bottom of this. Okay. Um, let's end the source. And then uh, we said LKD sizzle mod position equals share. And if I remember correctly, there was the data set name sys2 cmd lib or lib, and we call it look. Okay, so now we have something that should compile right away. And um, before I start compiling stuff, let's see. So we want to make it access code one, so it's authorized. And uh, let's look a little bit at the code. There's a macro here that, oh, okay, that goes from hex yeah, into decimal, um, and then we have the code. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make it um, print on no gen for now. I don't know how many errors we'll find in the super pilot. And let's give this a go. Um, I really don't know what to expect. Um, I see here XA, which means MBS XA, which is the 31-bit version, which we don't have, unfortunately, unless IBM releases it to us. I've been issuing some um, calls and uh, appeals to IBM to release MBS XA. It would be such an amazing thing if we could have 31 bit MBS. Uh, okay, so let's go check what it tells us. L. Okay, return code 8 in assembly and 4 in linkage. Okay, so here are all the errors. So obviously, this is not going to work. This is only something that exists from MBS XA on address mode and residency mode. So we have to go change that. Uh, find our mode. Yeah, this two don't make any sense. Rather than deleting, I just comment those out. Okay. Um, what else did we have? 
complaints about getMain. getMain is a is a macro in assembly that allows you to obtain um, dynamic memory, so you can put stuff in there. Because sometimes at the start of the program, you don't know how much memory you will need based on input. You have to determine how much how much memory, and so therefore you get dynamic like Emma lock in C on Unix. Uh, the only thing is that it com it doesn't like it, and I think it's. Yeah, it says here XA, so all the stuff that's related to XA, and it says location should be below, which I suspect means below the 16 megabyte line. Uh, and of course, this wouldn't exist in MBS 3.8 because there was no notion of above the line. So I think what we do is we go and let's try by just removing this part. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, but um, save it and run it again. Condition code 4, much better. Um, let's go see what happened. And let's go to the bottom. Yes, it put it, 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 linked, it linked it and put it into the library. So I don't know what will happen. It will most probably bomb out. Um, by the way, this, this, this is such a great program because you can see a lot of the stuff that I uh, I've actually never compiled this before, but a lot of the stuff that I've been doing uh, in the last two, three videos, including this one, I gleaned from looking at this. Um, so how to get to the areas, I looked at this, uh, but I actually never compiled it. So let's see if this runs. Um, uh, okay, take some distance from your monitors, folks. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen now. Oh, <laughs> this actually worked. First try, I love it when this happens. So this is a program that allows us to look at the address space, at the memory in the address space. We can look at our own or somebody else's. And so, I mean, I don't know the commands. Okay. Okay, so we say sim. Uh, CVT. So we define this now as a CVT. So, by the way, here, for instance, this is here starts the address of the CVT table. Okay, because it's we know it's in very low memory, and and that's how we go from here to this address. We go. It tells us fourteen zero eight. If we scroll down down to fourteen zero eight, they will find another table, and from there we get the pointer to another table. And this is what we're doing in this program that I wrote. Uh, today, um, um, here. All right. So this is what we're doing. Um, sixteen. Sorry, not ten. But we go to memory sixteen, location sixteen, and there we find the CVT address in low memory. So let's do this again. Look. And let's find this is ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is 070 is the location of the CVT table. Um, and so this is how it works. And But I'm really showing you this program look because as you can see, this is a full screen program. And in my next uh, video, what I'm going to do is I'll take our little program here, Who Am I, and expand it so it will report several of the kernel uh, or the or nucleus fields that we're interested in in a full screen fashion. Uh, but this is for the next video because we've been going on long enough already. Uh, I hope you had fun. What we saw is how to write interactive TSO utilities, uh, line mode, but we're going to switch, soon switch to full screen mode. I had a lot of fun programming this. It went much faster than I thought. If I didn't lose five or six minutes and of the video, obviously it took me much longer to figuring out that in MVS 3.8, when you use a procedure, um, you have to invoke it in the order in which it is uh, written in the procedure. So I have to move this line here to the to after the source code, not before. Um, in in later versions such as OS 3.9 and ZOS, you can just put it in in any order. But um, then we saw in this program how to uh, swing like Tarzan from one table to the next and made one or two stupid errors there but i learned from them 
Then we saw how to put T to use Tpo to put stuff on the monitor, and we used Tget to get a reply back. How to use it in Assembler, compiling, and all that to compare. And uh, and this is a really very very simple program. I mean, anybody can do this. Uh, if you have any questions, I will put this um, on my GitHub uh, MVS repository as uh, Who Am I, and uh, you can find it there. If you have any questions, please leave comments under this video uh, in, in the section of this video please remember we have a facebook uh, page uh, which i will link to as well at the beginning of this video and also in the description below this video as well as a chat um, as a chat uh, channel which is actually uh, quite lively I, I get users there all the time asking questions and one person created a whole new system with the questions that were answered by the people on the channel um, please uh, do press on the thumbs up button and uh, if you like this video uh, lately the number of thumbs up have kind of fallen down I've been I've been drifting off and uh, I do appreciate if you press press on the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing to the Moshex mainframe channel thank you very much for watching and have a nice day